thanks for the uh, chance to present today. And uh, I have no disclosures. Um, guidelines for optimal perioperative care recommend the implementation of more than 20 interventions to enhance recovery uh, in colorectal surgery. Um, these are called enhanced recovery pathways. We know that successful implementation of this improves outcomes, and we know that these outcomes are related to adherence to the elements of the pathways. Uh, when I talk about adherence, I'm talking about the, suc the successful completion, completion of a plan intervention, such as if a patient on the postoperative day zero needs to have a, a protein drink, the bottle has to, has to arrive to the patient's room, the patient has to consume it, and then he gets the check mark. Um, in terms of the relationship of adherence and outcomes, um, Dr. Pecorelli et al. from McGill University published this graph uh, the, in 2016. As we can see, as more elements are completed, we have a better successful recovery in blue and less 30-day complications. And the differences can be small from 18 to 19 elements. So each and every single element, it's important. And these are the elements of our enhanced recovery pathway. We can see a clear distinction in the preoperative elements, the intraoperative and the postoperative elements. Some preoperative elements, carbohydrate loading, selective bowel prep, preoperative education, intraoperative, the use of laparoscopy, keeping the patient normal thermic, avoiding uh, drains and long acting sedation, and the use of epidural. The postoperative part I'll go into detail a little bit later, but uh, when studies have looked into differences of adherence between these perioperative periods, uh, we see that adherence to postoperative milestones is constantly lower in the postoperative part. Uh, this study from Kennedy in 2014 went as low as 32% compared to 70. And we, we wanted to understand what's driving this decrease in adherence. So the objective of our study was to estimate the extent to which patient, procedural, and organizational factors predict adherence to ERP elements after laparoscopic colorectal surgery. Uh, we studied an ERP registry of 250 patients undergoing an elective laparoscopic bowel resection between these years at the Montreal General Hospital. So this is a list of our post-operative ERP elements. We can see that we have early fluid intake, early solid food intake, uh, nutritional supplements, chewing gum, and early mobilization. We also have removing the Foley in time, multimodal analgesia, switch to PO analgesia, um, interrupting IV fluids and adequate laxative use. Um, we can make a clear distinction when we look it carefully into these elements. In the table on your left, we can see that there's a group of elements that rely heavily on patient participation to achieve completion, such as early drinking, early feeding, early mobilization, chewing gum. We label these elements uh, patient particip requiring patient participation. In contrast, there's another group of elements that rely heavily on the clinical team. The clinical team here is the, the largest driver towards achieving completion, such as removing the Foley catheter, giving the patient multimodal analgesia, transitioning the patient to oral analgesia on POD2, interrupting IV fluids in time, and adequate laxative use. So in order to find where, where this is affecting and try to find ways to improve it, we made this division and we did our analysis separately for these groups. Then to choose our potential predictors of adherence, uh, we, we uh, base our, um, our selection in previous literature. You can see that patient factors are age, gender, obesity, smoking status, ASA, preoperative chemo, and prehabilitation received. The procedural and organizational factors, the creation of a new stoma, total uh, intraoperative fluid balance, the use of epidural, rectal against colonics resection, duration of surgery, arrival to the wards after 6 p.m., and complications in the first 24 hours. Our analysis was a forward linear regression, and we uh, evaluated our potential risk factors for linearity and collinearity. So these are our results. First, in the patient characteristics, we can see that the mean age was 65. Uh, almost 50% of our patients were female. 70% had an ASA of one or two. 11% uh, were smokers and received preoperative chemotherapy. And in the procedural and organizational factors, we see that 20% uh, received a new stoma, uh, the length of the surgery was a little bit less than 200 minutes. 28% had a rectal resection, 27% arrived to the wards after 6 p.m., and 18% had an early complication of any <coughs> clavian grading. In terms of adherence to our, to our two groups, the group that depends on patient participation had an adherence of 72 compared to 80 to the other team. You can see that this is already a way better a, a improvement in adherence than the literature that I showed you. 
And this is the result of our regression. We, we see here that factors that predicted lower adherence to the group of elements that depend on clinical team were early complications, rectal resection, duration of surgery in, in segments of 30 minutes, and actually epidural use predicted a higher adherence. The strongest one was early complications, meaning that patients that experience this have in average a 15% decrease in adherence to this group of elements. In the other group, our strongest predictor was arrival to the worst after 6 p.m. with 12%, meaning that patients that arrived to the ward at this time had a decrease in 12% in adherence to this group of elements. Uh, we also had early complications here, which can make sense, can be an intuitive factor that usually tends to deviate a patient from a pathway. And actually, the female gender predicted a lower adherence in 6%. So now we identified these significant factors. We wanted to understand how were these impacting the elements. So as you can see in this table for the patient participation elements, early complications affected early mobilization, POD1 protein supplement, and POD1 solid food intake. But late arrivals affected them all, except for chewing gum. Affected early mobilization, oral fluids, protein supplement on both days, and solid food. The most affected was POD0 protein supplement, and so did the female gender affecting the, the protein supplement on the first day. And on the other team, and on the other group of elements, early complications again affected the switch to oral analgesia, the IV fluid stoppage, and the laxative use, and rectal resection and duration affected them all instead of multimodal, uh, except for multimodal analgesia, which had almost a, uh, a perfect adherence. The, the heaviest impacted element here was the, the switch to oral analgesia on POD2. Um, so in summary, there are different factors associated with adherence to elements requiring per patient participation and those dependent on clinical teams. Adherence with patient participation elements included late arrival to wards, early complications, and female gender. Adherence with clinical team dependent elements included early complications, rectal resection, longer duration of surgery, and epidural use that predicted a higher adherence. In conclusion, better understanding of factors predicting better pathway adherence will inform quality improvement efforts. This will include ensuring access to nutrition on POD0 for later arrival to the wards, analgesia for rectal resection, and further investigation of differences between female and male patients. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think it's an excellent paper, but my question is how you know and who is playing before surgery, because that is the adherence is very related with the comprehension of the, of the patients. And the second thing is you, uh, adherence clinical team, the, the you know, yeah. yeah. What do you think about the surgeon's preference? Because sometimes surgeons are very subjective. Preference in something specific? Yeah, surgeons, no, no, this not to start because there's some problems, you know. Oh, so not, not, it's not possible, please. Exactly. <coughs> Ideally, all the patients are put um, under the pathway. Okay. All of them. And they can only deviate if something happened in the OR that excludes them from the pathway or they have an early complication okay. that takes them up. Thank you. Um, I, I see that you add laxative use in your pathway. Yes. That it's not that typical. Uh, a, can you explain what that is? And B, do you use um, alvimapan or Entereg as well? So, yeah. So uh, we were talking about adequate laxative use, uh, meaning that patients that have a stoma, that receive a stoma, should not get a laxative. And uh, not giving a laxative to a patient with a stoma means that they adhere to the pathway, whereas a patient without a stoma should receive a laxative, and that was an adherence. All right. What... Uh, Again, a laxative is not usually in most of the enhanced recovery pathways. Uh, which one do you use for non-stoma patients? I, I don't really That's remember. all right. Don't worry. All right. Any thank questions you. from the audience? All right. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. Job. Thank you.